what's up my channel it's your friendly sassy blonde writer here to talk to you about some things that you need to figure out before you start writing now when it comes to creating and planning our stories most writers tend to classify themselves in one or two of two categories you have your planners or your outliners or if you're george R. R. martin your architects and then you have your pantsers or gardeners Planners are the ones that have every single detail planned out before they start writing, while panthers tend to fly off by the seat of their pants or whatever top pops into their head. Both categories have pros and cons, I've already made a video about that and I will link to it down below. If you're a pantser, you get to just dive right into writing, but oftentimes have to deal with continuity errors throughout your book and other problems in the editing phase. If you're an outliner, you avoid these continuity errors character development problems and plot related issues because you already have a way to keep track of everything but you also have to wait until you figure that stuff out before you start writing. If you're anything like me, you don't really fit into either of these categories so you're a planter. While I love being organized and have trouble coming up with really good ideas on the fly, I also hate the idea of waiting to write and I, until I have all my characters and settings and plots developed and that's why I create my own method for writing a novel, and I suppose this will be a little peek into my process. There are some things you need to figure out before you actually start writing. So this is especially helpful for you planters or cancers out there, gardeners who don't like to make extensive outlines. Geography, having an understanding of the location and layout of your story that will take place will help you describe it and make your fictional world feel more real to you and, in turn, your reader. This is an area I used to struggle with a lot. When I would write a story, every couple of sentences, I would say someone was turning down the hall and they never entered a room. The weather is also a factor to consider. If your story takes place in the desert, and at one point it's raining, would it be a big deal to your characters live there? If it's really hot, would that agitate your main character? It's something that always affects us, and yet we rarely talk about it. Next time it's gross and rainy outside where it's really hot and humid, think about your mood and how the weather may have factored into it. Another thing you need to think about with your basic environment is the culture. How do people in your story entertain themselves? Are they involved in politics or prefer to remain ignorant? Make sure you think about these things as you write. I'm not saying you have to, by any means, figure this all out before you write. I know I sure as hell don't do that. But these are things to keep in mind as you're writing. Are they involved in politics about these things that you write in your story? Or do they only mention aspects of it when it's necessary? Please do not shoehorn in your carrot-based economy unless it's actually relevant to the plot. If you really want to mention it that badly, put it in to the plot. What kind of food do your characters eat? How do they dress? Tamara Pierce and Tommy Ayudemi are really good at this when in their writing. When I'm reading Children of Blood and Bone or Children of Vengeance and Virtue, I know exactly what the different outfits they're wearing, what the headdresses look like. When Tamara Pierce writes a scene at dinner, I know exactly what all of that delicious food looks. It just adds a special little layer of just details that are delightful. They always make a point to mention the food the characters are eating, the clothing they wear, and it adds a level of realism to their work that would otherwise not really be. How do the people in this world communicate with each other? In The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, it shows a variety of ways people with magic and without magic use to communicate. They use everything from magic markers where you write something on your hand and it appears on your boyfriend's hand, to astral projections, to just sending a text. If you don't have an idea of how people communicate, it could be a source of plot holes in your story. For example, if you have people using phones every five seconds in one scene, but then they don't use their phone in a moment of crisis, that's a major plot hole that happens in most horror movies and is something you definitely want to look out for. Next thing you want to think about in your fictional world is social class. Who are the haves and the have-nots? What sets them apart? I know it's cliche, but it's a fact of life. There are always going to be the haves and the have-nots, and that's always going to be a source of conflict. Kevin Kwan, the author of Crazy Rich Asians, does an excellent job of, of developing this 
in his books, it's usually the center conflict in them where he talks about classism and racism as well. It adds all these layers to all the interactions of the different characters. History, just the basic stuff. What kind of country is it? How long has it been this way? For example, in the Hunger Games, Pan Am is the more recent development. It hasn't been around very long. It's based off of the United States, mainly coastal states, and it hasn't been around very long because it was war torn a couple of years ago. You also want to think about technology and magic. Again, you don't have to figure out this stuff beforehand if you're a panther. You definitely want to figure it out as you're writing, or at least keep it in mind, interactions, because that will help you avoid plot holes in your story as you write. You also, of course, want to figure out your inciting incident because, as I've said in previous videos, your inciting incident is the reason why everything changes for your protagonist. If you don't have this figured out, you're going to end up wandering around the first chapter of your book, not really knowing what to do. You definitely need to figure it out in the beginning while you're writing if you're a cancer. You definitely want to know what changes this person's way of life. You also want to figure out where you're going to start your story reason why I say where you're going to start your story is, are you starting it in the middle of the party? Do you have to introduce a bunch of different characters all at once? Are you starting your party while when the main character is just waking up? It's super cliche, but if that's what floats your boat, go ahead. And you also want to have an idea of your general direction of your story. It can be the moral of the story or the theme. You can have an idea of the basic plot outline, like where you're headed or what your ending is or the climax of your story, but you want to have a general direction for your story to head in as you're writing. Otherwise, you can end up just kind of meandering around the world with no real purpose. Or you can also end up with a bunch of different action scenes that don't really all come together. The main character and their character. You can't exactly have a story without a main character for the setup for the with the main characters. You can have a basic idea of what your characters arcs to help ensure that you have a definite end goal for them, otherwise the story just kind of meanders around and goes around aimlessly. This will especially help you give direction while you write your book and will make sure that you aren't just, like I just said, you aren't just kind of wandering around this fictional world without a purpose or a plot. Number two, your world. The better idea you have of the world your stories and the easier it will be to write a story in it. This applies to everything. The basic setup of the world, the time period, is it futuristic, is it present day, is it past, is it historical fiction, to the smaller details like what kind of food do they eat, do they drive cars, do they fly around on broomsticks. So you should have a basic idea, you don't need to necessarily write it out, but you should have a basic idea of that before you start writing so that way you can know those finer details as you're writing it's kind of the basics of world building like i said while you don't need to have everything worked out before you start it's helpful to at least have an idea of the following that's all i got for you today so those are my things that you need to figure out before you start writing for all you panthers out there and things you definitely want to figure out for all you planners before you start writing. If you enjoyed this video, please like and leave a nice comment below. And if you want to hear more of my tips and tricks and writing advice, please subscribe to my channel. I post new videos once or two times a week. And of course, happy writing.